peace, blessings, love, and light. Uh, welcome back to Deep Speak with Brother Sadiq. Um, hope everybody's having a wonderful evening. Uh, I'm going to bring you this. It's a little bit of, it's a little bit of my heart. I think it's kind of necessary so that you get to know me a little bit better. Um, I plan on uh, being in your face a little bit more often. So, um, anyway, uh, I grew up in Detroit. Um, if you want to look at my whole story, the whole story, like on those old videos, I got some videos from like a year back and they're on the, on the, on the channel. If you want to look, but you can go through that. But I grew up in Detroit, but ultimately my family is a Southern family. Okay. Um, my father was from down that way. Also, uh, my mother. So that's where they met and, you know, Mississippi, Tennessee, you know, Arkansas area down in there. That's, so, so I was raised in Detroit but by a Southern family. So I have what you might call old school roots. Uh, I try to teach and talk to my boys about the qualities of uh, the invisible qualities of manhood, of life, you know what I mean? Um, character, um, respect, you know, the values that uh, Southern people kind of, you know, held true to. And so even, even, you know, um, now my wife, she's a Southern girl, you know, she's from Arkansas. So ultimately, um, uh, that's, that's my roots. And I think that's most of our roots. You know what I mean? If you look at the, uh, you know, the great migration from the South, some of us went to, you know, East coast, some of us went up Detroit and Chicago and all of that. You know what I mean? So that's what, that's what it is. And, um, I grew up in Detroit, you know, on the west side of Detroit, um, you know, but, but, but the point of this video today is just to kind of give you a piece of my heart, you know, and um, so I feel like, you know, for our people, right, you know, growing up, I was an intelligent kid, but I always knew that the environment I was in wasn't really going to feed the intelligence that I had, right, so <clears throat> it forces you to utilize that intelligence based on the environment right so that's many of us you know what i'm saying we became wise in things that weren't for our best value and then ultimately we had to learn how to release those things and become the better men that we became to become who we are today right so you know like they say uh every saint was once a sinner with that being said um I look at I look at the world today, right? And I look at the kids and how left out they are. And it's not really their choice to be even born into the world, let alone uh, the situations that they're born into. You know, I grew up in Detroit. I had homeboys, you know, we go to school in the morning. I see these cats getting on the bus, you know. And back in the day, it was the... You know, I don't know who, 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 you know, I'm aging myself. Like I said, I ain't scared of that. I'm 48 years old. Um, it was, it was, it wasn't, you know, it was a small jacket and it was called a, uh, like a, uh, what the hell was that jacket called? Members only. Yeah, it had a little members only jacket. You know what I'm saying? Nothing expensive. It was a little thin ass spring jacket. And then, you know, they come into the bus stop with the, with the members only jackets on, you know what I'm saying? Then it's shit and it's freezing. It's two, two and a half feet of snow on the ground in Detroit. And, and you know, Detroit didn't stop school when the, when the snow fell. So it's cats out here with, with Stacy Adams on in the motherfucking snow. You know what I mean? Snow up to your knees. And it's, and I remember this and thinking to myself, man, this is sad as hell because these are my friends. You know, these are my buddies. My peers, my compadres, all of that. You know what I'm saying? I got love for these dudes. And they mama on that shit. They mama on them, them drugs. You know what I'm saying? They on the, that crack and got hold of them. So they ain't taking care of the house like they supposed to be. You know, shawty didn't get school clothes because mama was on that, on that shit. So y'all know how that go. So, um, you know, ultimately those who are on this path, right? Those who are on this path, this is... Uh, common to us you know it's ultimately about love you know what I mean it's ultimately about love I love my people you know I grew up in the era of black love you see what I'm saying um I was born in 73 um I think I was in Detroit about three years old 
So I was born in Indiana and I was in Detroit, you know, about three years old, I'm pretty sure. And so uh, from three years old until I was 19, I was there. You know, that was my life and that's what I knew. And I, and I, and I grew, you know, just like everybody else do. I, I, I adapted to my environment, you know. I maintain, I never, you know, I never was the one to sell the dope because of my love and my love for my people, you know what I mean? I won't say I never sold. I, I, I put my hand in the game of dabble or dabble, but it wasn't for me. You know, I, I saw how, uh, I saw what it was doing to our people. You know what I'm saying? I saw, I saw, you know, beautiful women who might have had, you know, a little habit of this or a little habit of that fall totally off. You know what I mean? Within t three, four, six months of fucking with that crap. And it destroyed us. It destroyed our whole community. And I saw it. Detroit was a community of black love when I was growing up. Okay, I can go down the street anywhere and get a hot dog from whoever on the grill and, you know, go help my man with his car, you know what I mean? Uh, wash a car and he, you know, he throw you a dollar. You know, you go to the stove for the lady next door and she give you 50 cents. You know what I mean? These was things that you did. It was a community. It was a common unity. That's who we once were. And so I think all of us who are on this path have a longing for that, right? <clears throat> Especially my generation. Especially my generation, um, we have a longing for that community that we once were, and so um, that's part of the path, bro. It's it's all about love, and so I, I had to, you know, I was meditating last night, you know, praying. I had already finished praying. And I was meditating. I was sitting in meditation, and uh, I had a uh, interesting. You know, revelation. Um, I, I, I mentioned last night that you know that I was fasting, and so um, I was praying. And, and afterwards, I was in a meditation, and I, you know, I I I, I, be, I just began to bawl. Right, I, you know, what I'm saying I started crying like a baby. Right, um, and so in that, I was I was healed from some things that I didn't even know were there. Right. So I know, you know, I, I say this to, to almost anybody, white man, black man, anybody. If you're dealing with anybody who's black in America, who's like what they call a foundational black American, somebody who roots from here, then recognize that that person is probably not as balanced as you would think they should be. OK, we have some flaws. We have some. No, no, I won't even say flaws. We have some injuries. OK, we have some injuries. Some some self-inflicted, but mostly not. You see what I'm saying? Mostly not. It's like a social. Uh, I mean, we ain't. That's no. That's another subject. Okay. There's a social experiment that's been played on us. It's called the projects, and we can go into all of that at another time. Point being, um, if you're going into a relationship with a black person in America, know that they have some issues, and you have to be ready to deal with all of that. So if you think you're going in, this is going to be all roses, then you might not want to go in. Okay? And if you're going in and you're like, okay, it's going to be some bumps, but we're going to get through, then you, you got a good chance. So, uh, you know, I didn't recognize what was going on anyway. I was meditating. I got off track anyway. I was meditating and I started crying and I was crying because of the world, right? Like, I, I'm I, okay. I, I talk to my wife about this. I'm empathic, so I don't like to be around a lot of people. I feel shit that I don't like to feel. I, a whole lot of energies, right? So I don't like to go to grocery stores and none of that shit. I don't do none of that. I don't like to go. I don't like to deal with it. I deal with it when I have to. I know how to deal with it when I must, okay? So I don't, I'm not like a recluse and run in the house type shit. But, um, you know, I know how to focus my energy when I'm in Walmart, okay? So I know how to deal with it, but I prefer not to. Anyway, um, another story for another time. Anyway, uh, I was explaining to her like um, how I feel things and I don't like to go around people and I don't like to be in a lot of places because I feel things. And so I avoid feeling things sometimes, right? Um, and in the, in the cleansing of the, of the uh, fasting, in the meditation, some cleansing came forth, right? And the cleansing was something that I didn't even recognize that 
all of the people since, like I said, since I was 17, I've been looking at the traps that America set for us as young black men, you know, from the no jobs in the hood to the, to the way the police treat us, to the crack in the hood, to the guns in the hood, to, to the nation of Islam trying to talk to, I'm talking about everything. I've been, I've been, you know, around the block with it with my people since I was 17 years old, okay? Got real hard and heavy at 23 when I became a full-fledged Muslim. You know what I mean? And, and then I just continue learning and learning and learning. And so that is it. Now I have a passion for learning. And so uh, anyway, um, I don't want to get off track, but all of the pain from 17 of trying to talk to my people and they say, no, bro, I know, I know, I know. All of the pain from all of those years, from 17 years to 48 years, 31 years of pain, of rejection from my people. Pain of rejection from my people. And I didn't realize that the shit hurt me. I knew I'd be like, you know, hey, man, listen, check this out. This is what's going on. This is what I know new. This is what I'm trying to show you. Check this out. This is for your benefit. This is for our benefit. You should tell your people, check this shit out. Spend some time with this. You know what I'm saying? Put in the effort and energy to learn this shit. Get in it. And cats be like, man, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I hear you, bro. I ain't trying to hear that right now, though. But I know that. I already know what you're talking about. I seen that. You know what I'm saying? I know. You know, they give you all of these ways that they, you know, avoid dealing with the shit directly and, and go and do the work. And, it, and you feel it, and, and it hurt. And I never really just dealt with that shit. All of the motherfuckers for like 31 years. Everybody who I, women who I've tried to school, you know, ex-wives, you know, all of this shit. Everybody that I ever tried to school on being a better person and why you should be a better person, right? And it ain't for the for the world, you know. If you if a motherfucker do you wrong, say I give a motherfucker four hundred, five hundred dollars, and they like, damn, I can't believe that sucker ass nigga gave me four hundred, five hundred dollars for that. You know what I'm saying? My intention was to help that brother, and, and for whatever reason, we ain't going to the detail, but for whatever reason, my intention was to help that person. But in their intention, though I gave it to them with that intention, they felt like, oh, that motherfuckers a suck. I got him. I played him. I played him. I'm gonna get my. I'm gonna get my goods for what I gave, and they gonna get their goods for what they, you know, how they received it. You understand what I'm saying? So, you gotta be a good person for the fake sake of being a good person, because like I said, when kingdom comes, you gotta be ready to be that king, right? You can't. You can't let another motherfucker's uh, agenda or negative shit bring you down where they gonna be. So I would always avoid this, the, the, the shit, right? Once I felt like a motherfucker, like, oh, they don't want it. Okay, I don't, they don't want it, they don't want it. But after years, I, I didn't even realize I had grown, like, resent, you know, almost like the, the, the old uh, grumpy-ass man. Like, oh, fuck them niggas, you know what I'm saying? Niggas ain't trying to learn shit. You know what I'm saying? Niggas ain't trying to transform. Niggas ain't trying to grow. Niggas ain't trying to be better. You know what I'm saying? Niggas are trying to, you know, keep it pushing. Niggas get them, you know, the basics of what what America say you should have, plus a little more and a little change in the bank. You ain't got to worry about that motherfucker moving. You see what I'm saying? The goal is the transformation, right? If you, you, you we all got pieces and parts of what is the transformation. We know, I, I, I feel deep in myself. There is nothing that can stop our transformative time. We are in that, Okay. And we have the ability to bring about a change that will be what we want to see in the world. Most people don't even believe that they have power to transform things, but science has proven it. I'm talking about from science tests. I mean, they, they, they did tests with water and thought. They've done measurements where they can measure your brain. Uh, there is a video on television where they put blindfolds on these children and they were still able to read the colors in front of them. So our abilities are far beyond what they even tried to let us know. You know, there is a there is a secret that I learned not, not long ago watching that young cat. I told y'all once again, a Yaki awakened that he talked about our nine strand DNA. And this has been discovered, I think in 07 or 2011, sometime around there, that, yeah, that the Africans have a nine strand. Every one of African lineage and descent has, yeah. So, yo, it's a lot of information. We have nine strand DNA. Everyone else has six strand DNA. That is an amazing fact. What does that mean? That's something to, to, to wonder about. And I've always said, you know, if I lived my entire life, if I got to be 150 years old, I don't think that there is 
enough time for me to learn everything that I want to learn and know everything that I want to know. But I realized that um, that may not even be true. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's just uh, we live in an amazing time. We live in an amazing time. We, we, we know that, the, that this world is on its way down. You know, we, um, I think we can see that anybody of any consciousness. And so what is, what is the thing that you should do in a time where you see it all falling down? You, OK, so. Uh, yeah. Um, last night I cried for the world. I was getting off subject. Last night I cried for the world, for all of the people who I've ever tried to help and show that there are traps set for us. OK, you know, I used to drive a taxi and I used to talk to the to the college kids at the IU Indiana University. And one of them may even see this and be like, oh, I remember that dude. Yeah, I used to drive at night and I talk to these kids and I'd ask them sometime, you know, you in school for it? and they'd be like, oh, this or that or, you know, whatever. And I'd be like, is that your passion? Oh, well, no, my, my dad owns a company back home and. I'm going to go to school to, and that's a great thing because that, that, that moves forward your future, right? That moves forward your legacy, that moves forward generations. That's a beautiful thing. But there is also a thing called a midlife crisis in America because people have chased the vision that this society, this matrix has, has given them as options for their reality. You only have so many options that you can become in this reality. You know, there are slots, you know, you go to school for this or that or this or that or this or that, you know, the liberal arts or, you know, government or, you know, STEM or, you know, so many things that you can, it's only so many slots. But that's in the world that is the old. So we are moving into the world that is the new. I, I, I see that if we nurture and we dig and we dive into our children, right, we dive deep into our children and say, what are your gifts? What are your talents? Why did, why, do, why did you come here? What is the purpose for your being here? And we nurture these children. They will create things in the world that we've never seen. They will create things in the world that we never imagined to see. So um, I have to get a notebook and I'll be right back. <clears throat> I don't want to be very long, but I uh, do want to. So this is some stuff I wrote down. The matrix is designed to stop you from knowing who you are, forgetting who you are intended to be, and also to stop you from knowing what you are here for. Uh, totally to keep you distracted, okay? In the games of this world. That's the goal. To keep you distracted in the, in the lines and in the slots and in the ideas of this world. Meditation, prayer, um, the things that are, are relative to your internal self-work, okay? Shadow work, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Looking inside yourself, taking stock of your daily actions and the goals that you intend for your life. You know, if you intend to be better every day, if you move forward every day towards your goal, you will eventually get there. Okay. So um, I just want to say a couple of things about some stuff I've been studying, right? I'm, I'm always considering my spiritual life, but I also look at the television news and, I, you know, I, I add it all in. You know what I mean? Um, I think it was uh, Denzel Washington who said, if you watch the news, you are misinformed. But if you don't watch the news, you are uninformed. And so as a wise man, you should watch the news, though they intend to misinform you with this information. What you do with that information is how you utilize your own spiritual discernment to discern what is worthy. Like they say, you chew the meat and you spit out the bone. Right. So that's that. Right. Um, and. Uh, I watch all types of news. I mean, I watch Glenn Beck. I watch, you know, I, I go, I, I, I get around the, 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 the networks to see what's what. So real quick, I'm going to just run through some things. This is a global agenda. 
in the big business of the, the global industries are aligned. They are aligned. So if you want to talk about a cabal, that's what it is. And what they are doing is something that is unprecedented. And I saw this on Glenn Beck, so I'm going to give him his props for that. Um, but they are showing how, uh, and we've seen it, we see in our news how like, you know, MasterCard and these, these different businesses are working with the national, whatever NATO stands for, you know what I mean? Whatever NATO stands for, the government's uh, apparatus is working with the big business apparatus to attack a government, which is the first time this has ever happened, okay? So this is the first time this has ever happened. This is unprecedented, okay? So understanding that, you will see how this real agenda is still being moved forward regardless of what you're thinking, okay? So I wanted to say that. Um, and, I, 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 you know, it's, it's, a, it's a thing that I want to say, too. I was watching this this channel. It's called Real Nagas, right? N-A-G-A-S, Real Nagas, right? Y'all can check it out. It's a YouTube channel. Um, I can't remember the brother's name. I saw him on uh, Brother Rich's show, 363 Black Magic. And um, I, I, he, he was talking today, and I'm a, he gave a patent number for one of the new um, situations that they are bringing for uh, this global, you know, unhealthy, you know, situation that's going around, <laughs> okay? Uh, he gave me a patent number and it's a patent number that we can all look up and, and, and the information is related to a Dr. Michael McDowell who did his own personal investigation. He is a doctor, uh, I believe he said he is from Jamaica and the patent number I'm going to give you because he gave it to me and I think it's information that I should share and we should all look up. Um, it is one U.S. patent number, 1070378989, B as in boy, two, the number two. I'm going to say it again. It's U.S. patent number, 1070378989, B2. So that's a patent you can check out and look up um, some information. And I just want to give you a couple of the uh, details of what you might find when you look up some of the um, input <laughs> to this uh, patent. So some of the things that are necessary to, you know, in, re in the request of this patent. Uh, are the things that that are I guess yeah I, I guess you can say the ingredients yeah, the ingredients of, of of some of the things that the patent is requested for because I don't want to say that word exactly but you can look this all up. Uh, it has super magnetic iron oxide. No super paramag. I'm sorry, super paramagnetic iron oxide and super paramagnetic iron oxide nanoparticles, hydrogen graphene oxide, which if you look that up is nano razor blades. Um, shout out to Real Nagas for this information. Um, also in the ingredients are human kidney cells and the uric acid of swine. So there are more ingredients. You can check those out for yourself. Um, but that is a U.S. patent. And the number one more time is U.S. patent number 1070378 B number two. OK, so um, their agenda, as I said, is moving forward with or without your agreement or approval. So um, what can you do? What can you do? I asked, what could I do? What can I do? I can do what I've been telling you to do, which is purify yourself spiritually, you know, cleanse your 